Partway through this Formula One season, I've been 3D printing the racing circuits that they go to, uh, starting with Monaco, right there, oops, and uh, Baku in Azerbaijan. Uh, but I thought today I'd show you how I actually do these 3D prints. Um, now, if you have any experience doing 3D printing, this is going to be laughingly basic because this is some of the easiest easiest 3D printing you can do. But uh, if you're just curious the process of 3D printing, this is probably uh, a good primer on the topic. And so let's first uh, begin by talking about the what sort of image we need uh, to eventually get to a 3D print. Now the first thing I need to do is find a source for the Im image of the racetrack. So I normally start with the Wikipedia. I'll just search for Circuit Paul Ricard. Here's the Wikipedia page for it, and it does have a track layout. I'm pretty sure all tracks show the track layout in Wikipedia. So let's take a closer look. And it's, uh, it's the proper track with the chicane on the Mistral Strait. Uh, but now I have to see what kind of file it is. And I can see it's a PNG file. Now, PNG files are not useful for 3D printing. Uh, PNG files are uh, like images that come out of a camera. It's um, just rows and rows and columns and columns of pixels. And 3D printers don't print things in rows and columns. They print paths. So it wouldn't print, you know, this pixel here and then the next line, this, these two pixels there. It will actually print along these paths. So a PNG doesn't describe paths, it describes images. So this isn't very useful. So if it works out like that, I usually just Google like uh, circuit Paul Ricard uh, vector or SVG. So let's see what we have here. And in fact, here is an SVG of the Paul Ricard circuit. And it has a different options, has turn numbers. So we can't do anything with these turn numbers. And also this uh, chicane on the Mistral Strait isn't quite right. So uh, while I can use this, I probably need to modify it. But let's uh, download it. So to save it as an SVG file. An SVG file is a description, not of pixels, but of the paths. So that's getting to where we need for 3D printing. So let's take a look at what we need to do to modify that. So now I need to clean this up, correct the chicane. So I'll open it in Adobe Illustrator. Adobe Illustrator is made to edit vector graphics. Okay, so here we go. Okay, so now we can select the comp compass rows and all these, all this text needs to go away. So I believe I'm left with the basic track. Okay, now I'm gonna place that PNG to make it roughly the same size. So it looks like the chicane on the Mistral straight is what we need, but we just need to remove this extra kink. I also need to add that alternative chicane there. And I'll bring up properties and give it a 25% opacity. Now I'll modify this to not have this, these points here. Let me lock down this layer. And I'll join these points. And I'll just adjust this to look closer. And I think 
think we've got a track. Okay, so this is just one path, which is perfect for a 3D printer. It's a little fine, so I'm because this is a vector graphic, I can just uh, bring up the properties and thicken the line. Okay, that should do it. Now, the next step is to turn this into a 3D object. And uh, so I'm going to use software called Blender for that. The issue is that this is one path with some thickness to it, which in Blender will make a solid shape all filled in, which is not what we want. We actually want to import the path. So we need to first convert this to an outline of the path instead of just a single path. And there we go. So I'm going to save this, and the next step is to open Blender. So this is Blender, which is a CGI package, uh, and it's good enough to make professional movies even. So first it gives you a default cube, which I will delete, and then I'll import SVG. Scalable vector graphic. And I'll load up our shape. So where did it go? Well, it makes it very small. So I need to, first I'm going to, or set its origin to the center of mass. And then set its coordinates to the center of our plane here. And then make it very large. Okay, so that's one step. But the next thing we need to do is to give it some thickness. For that, I'll go to this panel. And under geometry is this extrude. And you see it's very sensitive. So I don't want to print it that thick. I'll just make it 0 0.02, 0 0.002. Yeah, it seems a bit thin. So I'll make it 0 0.03, and that should do it. Okay, now, you can save this as a Blender file, which you normally would, but our 3D printing software can't do anything with a Blender file. But you can export it as an STL. I'll call it Paul Ricard. Now it's still not ready for 3D printing. We need to open, go through one more app, which is, in my case, Cura, which is 3D printing software. I'll open our STL file. That's very small, so let's make it larger. So this cube represents our 3D printing platen, and so this is how it'll print. So our next step is to slide, is to uh, load up our SD card. Okay, I've got my STL file on a SD card. Here's my 3D printer. So let's just stick the SD card in. Then we can mount it. and then print the file. There it is. Paul Ricard. And now it's going to start heating up the platen. And then it's going to start heating up the, uh, I call it a platen, it should be called a bed. And it, then it'll start heating up the extruder and then it'll start printing. <laughs> 